Hello and welcome to another video on Back of the Net. I'm Mr. Tiggs. I've had a haircut and I'm here today to chat about Bournemouth news and also look at our Super 6. And I won't be doing it alone. I'll be doing it with Tony Funnel. Hey, you, Tony? How you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. I've had my haircut as well. Yeah, all haircuts going on over here. I wonder how many of you at home have had your haircuts. Um, obviously, the lockdown restrictions have just been started to lift a bit more tone. Uh, apart from getting your hair cut, has it changed your life much? Out playing golf still. Love it. Love yeah. it. You've been out much this week? Oh, only two or three times. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic stuff. Uh, so uh, having a little look, Tony, at what's been going on in the week. Bournemouth obviously had a fantastic uh, win against Huddersfield. They made it a little bit of hard work. Did you catch any of that? No, I didn't, I'm afraid, but... As they say, a win's a win, and they just keep winning, so it's good. And I keep being reliably informed, Tony, that sometimes being able to win when you're not at your best is a good thing. It, it is, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, that's good to know. Um, uh, one thing you might not know about me, Tony Funnel, and the people at home, is that I have a lucky number. Do you know what my lucky number is, Tony? I know mine's seven. I haven't got a clue what your number is. Mine's five. All right. And it's quite interesting because Bournemouth are currently – on a five-match unbeaten run. Uh, they're in fifth place in the league, and there are five games left to play. So I'm hoping that all of this is going to come together to mean that we are promoted back to the Premier League. Um, that's my fingers crossed prediction right now. Um, this week, I have been looking out there, Tony, to see what information I can find coming into our little chat that we usually have and I found a fantastic interview with uh, Mark Clement on the EFL podcast and I will put a link below the video for you uh, all those people who want to watch it and he said on that that it takes six to nine months for somebody to get used to a new job doesn't quite work that way in football does it no definitely not and I think when you look at it like that you look at how Woodgate's done people are starting to get a little bit converted on, on Jonathan Woodgate as, as manager now, aren't they? they? They're sort of changing their tune. How do you feel about him, Tone? Well, I think you had to give him a chance for a start. Yeah. And uh, he's not letting anyone down so far, is he? He's not. And he said in the interview that the players are listening and he's seeing what he says to them starting to come to fruition on the on the pitch as well. And he's also talks about how he's uh, always trying to learn more, learn more, learn more. And in that, kind of ways a little bit reminds me of Eddie Howe Eddie Howe was always trying to learn more learn more from whoever he could find yeah from whatever source he could find so probably those two might have got along quite well he makes an interesting point in the video here comes my lucky number again uh it wasn't that long ago we were five points behind Reading that's quite a jump in our league position isn't it it is but it, it can still go you've got we've still got to keep winning every team's got to keep winning because if yeah. you lose, you drop down and it's, you know, like you say, five games to go. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. And we've won five in a row already. Why not win another five in a row? That's what I want to see. Uh, there's a fantastic article as well. If you get a chance, uh, guys, to have a go over Vitals, an article by David Whitehead uh, in, in appreciation of Woodgate. And he talks about how he's managed to turn the malaise around. Um, so I'm converted. A long way from the manager that the Borough fans described. Is that a thing, Tony? You, like, it's interesting, isn't it, how players, or not players, managers can have a good spell at a club or a bad spell at a club, and that can kind of tarnish them. But that's not necessarily the end, is it, of their of their time in management? No, definitely not. And you started to say it originally. You were going to say players. It's the same yeah. for players. You can go to another club. It goes completely different for you. So, you know, yeah. a change of club sometimes is the world of good. Yeah, I think yeah, you're right. You're spot on, and it, it's almost like it sounds silly, but it, I know hard work is hard work. But there's almost like a magic element to it, isn't it? I feel sometimes that a manager can be walk out of one door and into another, and suddenly be you know really successful, or a successful manager can go to another club and it not work out. It's a it's an interesting thing. I think personalities must play a big part of that, and how people get along and, and work together. Yeah, it, it's it's hard work. Um, it's obviously having the right guys around you i think he's brought some good guys in to help him mm. and obviously he's got the players on board and that's half the battle 
but it's half the battle. Yeah. So yeah, please do check out that article and do check out that podcast if you get the time. I would recommend them both. And what I'd also recommend is that we have a little look at the league table as it is at the moment, Tony, because Bournemouth have got a game coming up this weekend against the league leaders, Norwich City. Um, it won't be in our Super 6 because it's a later kickoff, I believe. So I thought it might be a good opportunity for us to have a little chat about it. Going into the game, Bournemouth, five on the spin, doing really, really well. Need to keep hold of it, as you said, Tone. Don't let it slip now. But then they're playing Norwich, who, if they beat Bournemouth, I believe, will be promoted. Who goes into this game, Tone, with the more impetus to win, do you think? Bournemouth. Yeah. Bournemouth have got to keep winning, so it's so important for them. Norwich, in the back of their minds, well, if we don't do it this week, we could do it next week. Yeah, so, and they've got they've got some easier fixtures coming up than Bournemouth, haven't they? Yeah, I'm plugging for Bournemouth this week. Yeah, I agree with you. Looking at the table there, Tone, um, it's pretty much as we uh, would imagine at the moment. Um, do you think that was pretty much how the season's going to finish? Oh, we kind of talk about this every week, but can you see anybody moving position from where they are at the moment? It's difficult to say because, you know, at the moment, they're all sort of playing well, or yeah. they're all getting results anyway. As long as we finish in that top six and then win all the rest of our games, <laughs> I'll, be like happy. I'll be happy. Yeah, I, that's, that's fantastic. That's brilliant. Okay. Well, in that case, Tony, we've looked at this league table. Should we have a look at our own league table and look at our Super Six? What do you think? Yeah, definitely. Fantastic. We're going to do a little change over to our Super Six. And there we are, Tony Funnel. That is our Super Six League. And I can see your name there, Tony. Yeah, I'm there, but it's it's close. It's very close. We d I did say that a few weeks ago. There's a lot of people that were outside the top 10. Yeah. That if they got some consistency, would be up there. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, there's a few that have been there for a while, uh, like Zachariah um, and Lewis there. We've seen a lot of similar names. That That's no means, doesn't mean that you can't work your way up that league still, though. People are occasionally creeping up. Um, we got here, we got here. So we got uh, from the bottom there, sign eight today. We've got Lewis Curtis, Zachariah Modbridge, Sarah Murphy, as you just mentioned, Tony, Stephen Wheeler, who you know very, very well, uh, yeah. Tony Funnel, that's yourself, Mark Cole, Brian Baxter, and at the top, Jamie Dawson. Jamie Dawson's doing really, really well at the moment, isn't he? Well, he is, but he did us all a favour on Tuesday night. He didn't make any selections. Oh, Jamie, I've been there. I've, I've been, been there. there. I've been I've there. Been there. Done to me one week. Yeah, I did it. I did it last Saturday. I missed out. I don't know what I was thinking. I thought I'd done. I thought I did it. Yeah. Uh, happens to the best of us, Jamie. But still, hey, to miss a whole round and still be reigning at the top there, yeah, not too bad. Pretty good. Yeah, I think sometimes if, if you miss a midweek game, it's not so bad because I've looked and midweek fixtures, I think people find it hard to select. They find yeah. the Saturday, Saturday ones easier and there's more points scored. Yeah, the European games are tricky, aren't they? I, I tend oh, to find. I, I got both of them wrong. Yeah, I think I was doing all right at one point and then it just sort of fades away. Uh, should we have a little look, Tony, at the... So two game weeks ago, uh, you had some um, people who scored very, very well. Yeah, so hot shots for round 48, which was last Saturday. Uh, joint first place was Paul Bellamy and Wayne Bugden, both with 16 points. Followed by 11 players who all managed to get 15 points. That's amazing. That is incredible. That is incredible. That's, I think, I, I don't know about you, but I feel as though the people that were all getting better at this Yes, definitely, yeah. I think if we do this next season, it's going to be a tougher one for you, Tony. I think you're going to struggle. I'm sorry. <laughs> cheers, cheers. <laughs> uh, what about the following game week, Tony? Were there any people who impressed you in that one? Yeah, so uh, Tuesday night, which was round 49, we had uh, first place Paul Horry with 12 points, second place Anthony Simpson on 11 points, and in third place Luke Platt with 10 points. 
Fantastic stuff. That's great. So that's still a good score, isn't it? If you can get double figures. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, in third place, uh, Luke got 10 points. Mm. I look at my on uh, Tuesday night, I got four points. Yeah. Yeah. And it can change so quickly, can't it? It can change yeah. so quickly. Yeah. Okay. Well, should we have a little look at the prediction time now? Are you ready? Yes, yeah, let's have a look. Right. A look. Okay, so we're starting off with Newcastle against West Ham. Uh, obviously, kickoffs have been changed for a half 12 kickoff, and that's due to uh, the funeral that's later on in the day at three o'clock. So, um, Newcastle, West Ham. That's yeah, a bit of a battle tone. It is going to be a battle, I'm, but I'm going for Newcastle 1, West Ham United 3. Oh. Yeah, Newcastle without some of their big guns at the moment, I think they're going to struggle. I, I could. I think this might be a, a one season too many for them. I think they might struggle. Might struggle. Right. Uh, Brentford against Millwall. Yeah, I'm going 2 0 Brentford. 2 0 Brentford. Millwall sort of falling away a bit, haven't they, Tony? They were doing really well at one point. They were, yeah. Uh, didn't quite make it. Now, Sheffield Wednesday against Bristol City. I'm going to go for a Sheffield Wednesday win. I'm going 2-1 to Sheffield Wednesday. They have improved, definitely. And they needed to improve, didn't they? They yeah. really did. Okay. Oh, this is a bit of a bit of a derby. I don't know. Is it Luton against yeah. Watford? Yeah, a little bit. I'm going for Watford 3, Luton 1. Watford 3, Luton 1. Okay. That'll uh, that'll please the the Hornet fans there if they can. I think they're probably going to get second place, aren't they, Tony, in the league this season? They look like they should do, yeah. Yeah, uh, and then we've got Middlesbrough against QPR. Yeah, I'm going for a home win, two one to Middlesbrough. Not going with QPR this week, Tony. Ah, oh, they keep letting me down. <laughs> they do keep letting you down. And then we're going to move across, and we got Nottingham Forest against Huddersfield. Huddersfield. To their credit, they work really, really hard. And I think they're still probably stinging from the fact that they took a bit of a beating at the hands of Norwich, just a bit. And then uh, they've had to play us uh, as well. So uh, what do you think, Tony? Well, I don't know if I should do this because you shouldn't change your mind. But I was going to go 2-0 to Forest, And then you're making me think, oh, <laughs> will it only be 1-0? But no, don't change your mind. 2 0 no. Forest. Stick with it, Tony. You, you, you were feeling it then. You know, you've got to stay with it. Now we've got a golden goal prediction time. What are you going to go with, Tony Funnel? Oh, let's go for you. Lucky number five. Yay. I'm feeling it. I think it's going to happen. I'm going to go head to head with Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Submit our entry. And that is that, Tony Funnel. Um, yeah. An exciting. Saturday of football coming up. Are you going to catch the Bournemouth game, do you think? It's on a later kickoff. I know. I think it's 8 o'clock, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's yeah. quite late. Yeah, unusual, unusual. Um, so, yeah, you've got the, the Bournemouth game then. And then there's only, can you imagine, only four fixtures left. I know, it's amazing. Yeah, it goes so quick. What an odd season this will be to look back on uh, and try and remember. I've not made it to one game, for obvious reasons. Um, so it's a very odd odd thing to to remember but if we get back to the premier league i mean it's got to be good news for everyone isn't it well i was just going to say you said there's actual four fixtures left in the league in the league but yeah we're going to reach the playoffs so you've got another couple more games though yeah yeah you're right you are right at least at least yeah. if not three let's hope it's three oh, I guess, definitely. i'd love that i'd love that and i think fans will be allowed back so hopefully we'll get some cherries down there at Wembley um, and hopefully somebody from back of the net so we can get some some stuff from there. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Back of the net will be at Wembley. That sounds good, doesn't it? That does sound great. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. Right. So from me and Tony Funnel, it's adios, adios and up the cherries. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.